both herbs are pretty, have pretty flowers and are fragrant too. So the ladies will enjoy that. And Nick will love that as well. Besides, they're nice to harvest and put in the kitchen. Carrots love tomatoes. Getting to know good and bad companions can double the bounty of your garden. The only required work is to plant, is plant your garden, plan your garden planting properly. So here's a, an herb companion chart for you. Yes, Stacy, do you have a question? Okay. Anybody that wants to go through these, I can print them out for you, or I can email it to you, you can go through it. So the companion planting process. The following are some examples of farming in the village of Kashrain, where companion planting is practiced traditionally with herbs and vegetables. It looks a little hectic. Um, it's not going to be all perfect and, you know, like, you know, the, the typical picturesque garden wood. You're not going to, you know, plant rows, perfect, you know, little rows. You're going to have plants interspersed with each other. So, obviously, doing plots, um, you can see doing sections instead of specific rows to actually plant your garden. Um, and then just plant with the proper spacing as well as mixing in their companion plant or whatever plant would have a symbiotic relationship with them. So it's not going to be your picturesque garden, but it's going to yield much higher. As you can see, there's beans uh, with the cabbages, and again, it doesn't look pretty. It doesn't look like, you know, it looks like you haven't weeded in a while, but it's going to create a higher yield than, you know, just the normal, everyday, average garden would. And not only that, you're not using any pesticides in your garden, you're not putting any chemicals in there, you're not using miracle Grow or anything like that, you're just using uh, natural companionships with other plants. A little better shot of the, cap the uh, cabbage and the beans. So some onions and uh, lettuce. Where do you these pictures, Ross? This is your garden? No, this isn't my garden. Oh. This is a... Uh, <coughs> the uh, ATTRA did a study and uh, Basically, this was one of the gardens that they did uh, just to show the, the benefits of uh, companion planting and to, to show that uh, the yield would be higher, uh, where it's using you know, conventional like pesticides and miracle grows and growing aids and things like that. By not using those, by using uh, these you know, tried and true methods that they would have a better yield, and they did. That's some big cabbage. That's some big cabbage. So that just goes to show you the yield that it can that it can have. And of course, you can compost everything when you're all done. Anything that you have left over, throw it in the compost. Uh, turn it once a week, and uh, you know use it in your garden the the following year. You can use, if you have a lawn, you know, all your grass clippings, you can throw your grass clippings into uh, one pile. Uh, the way we used to do it back at my old house is uh, we had two separate sections. We would have uh, grass clippings on one section that would get turned uh, just once a month. And then we would have uh, a, a different section where it was, you know, eggshells, coffee grounds, uh, banana peels, uh, anything of that nature. And that would get turned uh, once a week. So anything like that where uh, you know, it came from the kitchen or, or would normally go into the garbage, that got turned a lot more. But the, uh, the grass you want to let sit a lot more, that way underneath it really you know, turns into some good, good compost for your garden. And the following year when you go to uh, you know, plant your garden, when you go to till up the dirt and everything like that, just you know, throw it down in the garden and till it right into the soil. 
So, when you have to come, when you've come to harvest time, remember inorganic planting. Always make certain you know what your companion crops are in the field. This will lead to reduced crop damage through pests and diseases. Re remember organic farming is a process and have fun. There you have it. Questions? So if you're having a higher yield, does that mean it's going to be using up like uh, a lot more like uh, nutrients, enzymes, and everything from the soil, and you're going to have to rest it or rotate it more often than here to here? You're going to want to rotate it, you know, as you know, normally like you would anyway. But it's not using any more, you know, any higher amount of nutrients. It's just the, like they said with the, uh, you know, the nitrogen fixation. With those types of plants, they're actually bringing more nitrogen into the soil instead of, you know, if you threw some miracle grow down, it's basically doing the same thing, but only you're actually using plants to promote it. And uh, instead of just throwing down a bed of miracle grow at the beginning of your growing season, the clover is actually continuously putting nitrogen back into the soil. So it promotes even, even further growth. So it's, it's not using more nutrients, it's just that the companion plants are putting more nutrients in it, which promote larger growth. That seems like a dumb question, but no what do you questions. turn it, the compost with? Like, mm -hmm. A pitchfork. Oh. Yeah, you just, you take a pitchfork and you just, you know, you, it's basically, you know, just, uh, you know, like stirring. You just take it from one yeah. end and you put it on yeah. the other okay. end and then go to the bottom and then just move that, put that on the bottom and then the bottom on the top. It's just rotating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You but, can do it with your hands. Yeah, you, you, it yeah. smells a little bit though with your hands. But, um, you know, with, I wasn't with, sure if you just dove in there and started No, <laughs> with grass, I mean, you don't need to turn grass. Um, you can just keep piling grass, you know, just keep piling it on. And then um, just, you know, till it up in your garden the following year. And it's, it's still going to be, be as good. You know, whereas, you know, like the, the coffee grounds, the, the eggshells, they actually need to really break down. Uh, it's been a while since I read the book, so I think they talked about uh, different flowers to ward off uh, certain pests. Do you remember reading that in the book? There are different flowers to ward off certain pests. Uh, I didn't cover that. I can't really remember which flowers they are, but I can get back to you on that. Isn't it marigolds are good for something? Yeah, there were... someone... You know what? Help me out? Yeah. Like a bunch of different things that are good. That's why. Yeah. Isolated. The the book covered so many different yeah. aspects, um, not just companion planting, but there were there were other things as well. Um, the flowers I really didn't go into just because uh, you know planting vegetables with vegetables uh, specifically when you're growing a garden to produce food uh, seem more pertinent. But I can figure out which ones. And I don't like to grow flowers either. You can't eat them. So. Yeah, you can't eat flowers. No. Caitlin? Um, when you were saying that you, you have like a grass compost, mm -hmm. um, do you use the ground under the grass compost? Is that what you're saying? Or do you use the grass? No, you just use grass clippings. So what were you saying like underneath? You said something about like under all the grass. You want to get that in there too. The soil or something. No, it's just rotating. Yeah, it's no, rotating it. When you're rotating it, you want to take the, the grass clippings under the top layer because those are obviously going to be more broken down and you know be more composted that are going to be better to put into your garden. Um, but with with grass, I mean, you can put it in your in your garden and till it up, and it'll just you know break down in the soil. Where you know you can't take eggshells and then you know sprinkle them in your garden and till it up. It's it's not going to have the same effect. You, those actually need to break down and biodegrade. Uh, further to you know have the desired effect. Uh, can we have um, a competition to see who has the largest yield of? Um, I'm sure everybody puts a tomato in their garden. Mm -hmm. Did you say that? Yeah. Do you think we could do that with the uh, biggest companion? tomato? The biggest tomato based on companion gardening, uh, organic, non-chemical uh, agents. Sounds Is good. Are we testing? Um, I do want one stipulation. You have to have participated in the production of the, the, the plant for at least 50% of the plant's um, of life. 
So I'm trying to exclude Nick from it because I think I think you should have to actually <laughs> grow it. Grow it. You have to plant it. You have to plant it, and it has to sprout. You have to give it, it care, it. care, love, okay, nurture. That's me. Yeah, that's me. I'm gonna plant one plant. That's fine. You can plant one plant. You can plant one plant. We put it in a. I, 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 you can put it in a pot. Yeah. You don't need a whole yeah. So anyone can participate that can uh, buy a pot. A tomato. The tomato competition. Biggest well, tomato. What do they want? Does it doesn't have to be a specific oh, type of tomato though? Because big, biggest tomato. Well, biggest tomato or biggest yield? What single plant yields the most tomatoes? Nah, I can't do that. Because then you could just do cherry tomatoes and get a thousand. No, no, by weight. It would go by weight. So over the over the life of the, the specific I'm tomato plant. Really uh, uh, Poor sport. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not going to plant any Poor sport. Like, with one plant, how does that go with companion gardening? Yeah, you have to put something else in it in the pot. It's a big pot. It's <laughs> you're, 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 yeah. Caitlin's breaking it down a little far. Your plant's going to die if you don't get it. Using it. It's sad based on companion gardening. Using, okay. using a single tomato plant. With other companion plants, plants out around it. Enhancers. In one pot. In in one pot, <laughs> it can be a big pot. 